folks are starting to come in. This is Leilani speaking. This is pretty much all you're going to hear from me. I'm going to immediately turn it over to Kita and our wonderful panelists for this conversation. Um, a reminder that there are captions provided for this and all of our panels. And if you need assistance with anything else, you can DM me right here in the chat or shoot me an email, which I will again place in the chat. All right. Thanks all. Kita, um, going away and being quiet. Okay, ni tampak ni pishtui yutasa kita ni tasuiz Nelson Sullivan ni chashaywank mantakat ta shinakak ta mui black ni chapaywank shamat asa mashawalmik ni tap. Welcome all. Uh, my name is Kita Sullivan. I am the Senior Program Director for Theater at New England Foundation for the Arts, which means that I work with these lovely people to bring you the National Theater Program or National Theater Project. So um, our conversation today is really that. It is a conversation between um, other folks. And so in, to enable that conversation, I am a light-skinned uh, Native woman with what I used to say was salt and pepper hair, but you know, I think it's now just gray. Um, I have large blue frame glasses, a large uh, cow neck blue sweater with beadwork that I made a star flower based on a piece of my grandmother's jewelry. Behind me is a picture of my homelands, Montauk Point, New York. Um, and it has sky, ocean, and land, which is how I hope to walk through the world. Um, I am going to ask each of my, the folk here to introduce themselves um, in their own traditional ways, um, as well as um, however they, they choose to. Um, and I'm going to go uh, first on my screen is Tara. Mado, he's Jay Estongo, Tara Joe Chefkados. Hello, everyone. My name is Tara Moses. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a citizen of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, as well as Muskogee Creek, and I'm also of Cherokee and Mescalero Apache descent. Um, a visual description is that I have light brown skin, very long, very dark. Sometimes it's blue black, sometimes it's kind of brownish. I don't know. Colored hair. I think it's more on the blue blacky brown side today uh i have red lipstick on uh i have very large very sparkly uh beaded earrings that uh have a my chemical romance pick in the middle of it and like spikes we're feeling very metal today and i have on a uh, black mesh button up and behind me is an office you can see a bookshelf a very light pink wall um lots of books some art you can see my hallway my lovely red rug in the background um and yeah, I'm calling in from uh, the land of the Narragansett or what's colonially known as Johnston, Rhode Island. And I think that's all of the introduction for now. Thank you. Top it named Tara. <coughs> Jasmine. Akwe, Mune Nukish Gatwank, Nutasawis, Mukushum Nashoyuank. Um, ka anunaku nipmuk. Um, it is a pleasure to be with you all here today. Uh, my name is Jasmine. I am a light skinned native person, um, uh, nipmuk descent, and uh, I am wearing bone earrings with abalone at the bottom. They're very long, and <laughs> my hair is parted on the side and very long and dark. <laughs> and um, I am wearing a black chemise. My background is blue with lights going. I'm calling in from my homelands in Massachusetts. How about me, Jasmine? Uh, Bonnie. Katapata Namu, Wani Kisa, Kwami Nitompa Ak, Natasuis Kisa Kiwiam. Nu Thomas Masipia Kach Natai Masipia Natasha Rikon Tam Apat Niat Yuat Yukisakat. Hello everyone, my name is Siobhan Growing Elm. I also go by Vani. My pronouns are Nakam, she, her, hers. 
and I am Mashpee Wampanoag. I'm a Black Wampanoag woman living here in Mashpee, which is on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. I today am wearing a orange sweater, turtleneck sweater. My hair is salt and pepper, a little bit of gray streaks. Today it's pulled back in a braid. I have um, gold metal framed glasses. And behind me, I'm here in my office in my home. Um, you can see a, one can see a closet door, um, television screen, and curtains in front of the window. I think that's my degree in the back there on the wall. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Um, grateful for this uh, intentional space and look forward to our discussion. Dr. Um, I'm going to ask us all to speak loudly, clearly, and slowly. There are folks who are having difficulty hearing us. Um, and I realize that all, I think all four of us tend to speak in our lower registers, which is really interesting for, you know. Um, so, and I recognize also that some of us are not well. Um, and so this <laughs> is also um, an issue. Um, so I wanted to start this conversation um, by acknowledging the point of time that we're in and how amazing it sometimes feels. Um, and I say sometimes intentionally. Um, we have, I mean, Tara, you just opened off something off Broadway. Jasmine, you've been you've been doing like all of this writing and this amazing work. Uh, Vani, you are working, uh, you know, I see you almost every year with the Commonwealth Shakespeare, which, you know, it's Shakespeare. Um, but we also have things like uh, Maddie Sayets, where we belong down at the public. Uh, Delana Studies and So We Walk is also touring. Um, we have, you know, I, I love the play and I hate the play, the Thanksgiving play uh, by Larissa Fast Horse, right? Which was in the top 10. Um, you know, I am the parent of an a native actor who gets to do work, right? These are things that I could not have imagined when I was their age. Um, and so I I just wanna, you know, we have res dogs. We, I mean, there's just so much going on right now. And I just wanna stop and acknowledge that this moment is something that hasn't happened before. And, um, and how grateful I am, one, to be able to talk to all of you about this moment, but also that it actually exists. Um, it is Native American Heritage Month for everyone else but us, because it's our heritage every single day of the year. Um, and so I love that it actually, we actually can celebrate it that way, but I think we, celebrate ourselves in different ways every all day every year um and so i wanted to acknowledge that it's also Nineveh, um down at my res which is our actual feast time uh that now has been usurped by thanksgiving um and so um starting with that spirit of gratitude um is important to me um, so, um, there, are, I think the first thing I want to throw out to all of you is this contradiction, this moment in time, how, how do you see it and how do you see it lasting? Because, uh, you know, there's also the fad thing, the exoticism of the moment. And so I'm going to throw it out there and whoever wants to take it on first, go for it. This is Tara. I'll jump in. <laughs> I know it's always a game of chicken. Who's going to go? Um, 
Yeah. So I feel, I feel similarly in that I'm holding like a lot of confliction about the time that we're in right now, because while it is so thrilling to see for the first time ever native stories on like prime TV, you know, as well as like prey being dubbed in Comanche and available on Hulu and like, I'm breaking all these records. It's amazing. Um, I'm still holding that there is still such a lack of representation in these positions of power, um, you know, still holding that we are still dealing with folks who are not indigenous, portraying indigenous roles. So red face is alive and well, you know, we're still dealing with, yes, we have these wonderful commercial native theater projects happening, but we don't have native directors at the helm of them. Uh, we don't have native producers at the helm of them. And then as well as holding with, as we increase in popularity, because we're cool now, all of a sudden, um, also holding uh, the the vulnerability in that, and that it becomes even easier to appropriate and to take um, our stories, cultures, and traditions and bastardize them into whatever the mainstream media wants to make. Um, you know, and I say that, and res dogs, it's set on my reservation. Those are my people. That's my language. And while I'm so excited to see it, at the same time, I'm just like terrified for the day um, that someone's like, oh, yes, I saw this and I wrote it into this other thing that I was inspired by. And they're not Muskogee or they're not Native whatsoever. Um, yeah, so for me, for me, it's hard. It's a lot of it's a lot of conflict is currently how I'm feeling and thinking about it. Um, and just wondering, like, where are levels of protection, where are access to power? Because I think at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is Native folks in all levels of leadership, um, you know, not just the wonderful talent on screen, not just the writers, you know, not just the directors, if we get that far, um, but also the executives, the producers, those folks who can really, like, hold and protect um, and gain access through this industry where we can do all kinds of things, you know, not just things squarely rooted within our identities, and this is what we want to do. Um, so that's for me. That's what I'm thinking. What about y'all? I'll jump off of that. Um, thank you, Tara. Um, I am Jasmine and <laughs> speaking, and um, I, I completely agree. I think that this is a really wonderful moment, but there is a bit of wariness in it where, where yeah, I, I think we're a little bit of a fad um, and I definitely feel that. I feel that in um, the place where I live, where um, there's a lot of uh, social justice people who are very determined to do things the right way, but I was at a, um, an event the other night and they did not even speak the name of my tribe correctly when they did their land acknowledgement. And so that made me think, well, how much do you actually care? why are you even saying this if you can't say the name of the tribe that you're speaking how much research did you actually do are you just doing this because it is a fad right now because everyone else is doing it and i think that it's really important that beyond just doing it because everyone else is doing it you have to do that work you have to be committed to engaging with the people around you especially if you are not um familiar with native people right if you're um if you're a white uh person in the land of theater or film tv right you have to be willing to do that work to engage with um how native people are going to come into the space and you have to be willing to hold that um and not just have things go um your way all the time Tapatash, um, this is Siobhan. Um, yeah, yes to everything that was just said. Um, I think that it's important when, um, when we're speaking about, you know, what, what has been um, put forward already. Um, I totally agree with Tara that there's that that we can look at it and examine it and, and yes, embrace the joy of it uh, because we're beautiful. So like it's about time. Like our stories should be on prime time, written and produced and and directed by us and and um, and embraced by everyone because 
what we're seeing is um, that that just the very act, the sacred nature of storytelling has like this um, beautiful, you know, flow and ripple effect into the community that it's important to um, uphold. At the same time, it's super important to protect it, right? And to protect um, the origins because what's being put forward is going to differ greatly from what is passed down from generation to generation within the veil of the culture, right? There are some things that are just not for public consumption. And so uh, understanding as the maybe coming from it from a non-Indigenous perspective as to what is going on, understanding that this is just a glimpse, right? And that there is this beautiful diversity across Turtle Island. It's not just, you know, um, of this sort of uh, pan-Indian, if you will, um, way of being that that we all we all each have distinct languages we all each have distinction in our cultural practice and tradition and how we're teaching our children we all have a distinct relationship to understanding the origins of our being and that those aspects of um, like a television show is not going to capture that right a play is not going to capture that that there is there are things that are for public consumption in there and understand that by watching these things or experiencing these things or being in relationship that and if one is non indigenous you're just getting a glimpse and that glimpse itself is an honor and a privilege. Mostly because of the the history and um, the. Um, the uh, attempts at erasure of a culture we are existing um, uh, even even um, beyond these attempts at erasure and so making it um, sort of making sure that um, the perception of what is being viewed is is um, not ticking off a box it's not it's not um, you know embracing uh, the entire culture that there are still very distinct unique um, uh, forms of expression from within this, this beautiful, beautiful culture of ours. So um, this is, I feel like, is just the beginning and that there is, of course, capacity and that we are capable of, of, um, of much, much more. Yeah, I, we're not giving away all of our culture. It's been taken so many times. People have taken it. We're not giving it away. Um, and I think that's one of the things that <clears throat> maybe this is, is leading into a different question, but um, the idea of reciprocity. Um, and I, I think I have run into this. I, I have run into this personally, which is, oh, I want to learn about your culture. I, you know, I really want to do this native play in November. Um, can you teach me? Right. And I'm like, I'm 61 years old. I don't think I can teach you everything in an hour. Right. And so I'm wondering, as you are navigating in um, this Western European tradition of theater, um, which is not necessarily our tradition of theater and storytelling, um, how you are handling that sort of, oh, teach me moment. Go ahead, Vaughn. This is Siobhan. Um, great, great question. I think while reciprocity is important, right? Um, you know, we're talking, it was mentioned earlier, Jasmine, thank you for the offering about land acknowledgement and how important it is to um, have correct pronunciation and, and, and um, education. Um, to be in right relationship with the original stewards of the land that you know, is under your feet to the land that was stolen, the land that was used as such a tool 
for colonization, right? This request from, you know, a, a non-Indigenous person to teach or to receive even more after all that has been received, um, understand, you know, the, um, I would just invite understanding the weight of that um, uh, question and that if one is seeking to be in right relationship, to um, remember that there's traditional practice um, of offering, you know, making an offering before asking to receive something, right? So um, that could be, you know, a small gift or, you know, um, in some communities it is tobacco or receiving something, educating oneself about what is, um, a proper gift or offering before receiving anything, um, whether that is intellectual property, whether that's knowledge, um, understand that language. Um, while language is everywhere, it's in our, you know, it's in our state name, it's in it's in town names. Wampanoag language is is throughout the the eastern coast here, and, and other um, languages, uh, other dialects here. Understand that. Um, if asking to know how to say something or asking for a translation that, um, you know, that, that, that comes language was such a tool, uh, you know, that was the first thing that, 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 um, indigenous people were cut off from, um, to, to, in order to feel connected. It's how we connect to the land. It's how we connect to each other, the seen and the unseen world. And so when, when seeking to, um, get that information that if, that the that understand what the protocol of giving and receiving is on the land that you're on um and at the same time understand what the, what weight the historical weight that that carries particularly if one is a white bodied individual um what that language and what that request um carries with it um because uh there there just um seems to be this sort of culture of taking and and when we're engaged in that what we are perpetuating um is is sort of this colonized view that we're we're just you know like it's a petting zoo of some kind that we're just here for the taking and that is you know deeply not the case um and that there is um that there are engagement practices and protocols that can be honored that are quite easy to honor and and quite frankly they enrich and move beyond the question that you're asking you tend to when you come um, with uh, a, a good heart and a good mind and awareness of protocol what one can find is that they receive beyond what their original question was if you're seeking something, it's because it's not because there's information that needs to be poured in. You're seeking something because you're you're calling forward something within yourself. That's true education. True, the root word of education, educari, is calling forward that which is within you. So you're calling forward something within yourself and being alert to overstepping or being disrespectful or or perpetuating harm, right? If, if there's a request or a desire to learn more, there are many ways in which you can do that in a respectful way. I'm actually gonna ask Tara to respond to that as someone who is <laughs> like busy working right now all over the place. Um, I'm still not sure how you are like everywhere all at once. Um, I have many phones. Yeah, well, and still in school. Um, shout out for, you know, actually changing the way the educational system works uh, within higher education. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to ask you to respond about this because I know you run into it. <laughs> yes, thanks. I was playing chicken with Jasmine. I was like, who's going to go? Um, but yeah, so this is Tara again. Um, 
first of all, like, you know, thank you for such like, it's such a generous offering, you know, about like, you know, coming in and like understanding protocol and like, what can you give before you can receive? Um, I'm sitting over here stewing because I have a hot take, <laughs> which is, um, I don't be educating no more. I don't do it. Um, I wrote those plays back in the day. I don't do it now. Mm -mm, do not care. Um, anyway, but so my less hot take version of that, <laughs> but still hot take, um, is, is that for me, what I found is as a playwright, especially in my early years, I wrote those plays, um, educating around missing and murdered indigenous relatives, educating around Indian Child Welfare Act, which, whoop, Mm -hmm. Don't get started. What's happening right now? Ah. Anyway, um, you know, around tribal sovereignty, so on and so forth. And the intention was to educate non natives and specifically white folk, because that's who the audience was. That's who the producers were and continue to be in many places. Um, and what I found during that is, is that my spirit was not doing hot. <laughs> it was not doing great. Those were not the stories I wanted to tell. You know, I wanted to tell unapologetically native stories, specifically around my peoples and cultures and communities um, that did not have the intention to educate. And uh, that also had fully native casts, which, you know, even now it's still a, an issue that I, a quote unquote issue that I'm running into often from producers. This is that like, oh, they love my play Quantum because there's only two Indians in it, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was like, my other work, my later work is far better written and far more interesting in my opinion. But okay, primary stages off, off Broadway, whatever. But um, is that me being able to write fully native casts that are just strictly unapologetic, that are just about us having a good time. My favorite play I've written is called Snag. Um, it's about what exactly you think it's about. You know, Indians having a good time and fucking, as you do. But <laughs> people told me that they've learned so much through just the authenticity of what's on stage. And that's what I'm in pursuit of now is making audience well hmm, making audiences learn from unapologetic native stories without me having to spoon feed because you know i think about the very first time i ever saw another native on stage was at arena stage in 2017 um and i've been doing theater since i was eight years old so that's a long time not seeing another indian on the stage and i think up to that point and even now how much I've been able to learn um, from other playwrights, from other stories that are not my lived experience. And they were not, those plays were not written with me in mind. Uh, those plays don't care about me. You know, I was just fortunate enough to uh, be invited to participate in watching them. Anyway, and if I can do that as young as an eight-year-old child in Oklahoma of all places, and that's not the place you want to be <laughs> for the theater, but if I'm able to do that, then I think that the educated audiences that exist today are able to learn through just witnessing um, and not understanding everything. Just like I write in my language, I don't translate it. Sucks to suck. You don't need to know. You're, I promise you're gonna put it together. <laughs> um, and yeah, and this uh, really hot take of mine, you know, um, has, you know, resulted in like lost production opportunities. You know, I don't care. I was like, I don't wanna be there anyway. If they don't want like my authentic, unapologetic indigenous self, I don't wanna be there. So I win at the end of the day. Um, anyway, but for those who really, um, those allies who really have walked the walk and have really wanted um, to be in good relationship have only just told me every single time after every single show has always been like, you know what, you were right. We were worried and you told us to stop being worried about it and just let you do what you wanted to do and let the room do what they wanted to do. Let the other artists do what they wanted to do. And truly the impact is just that much greater. Um, and so that's the position that I'm in now where I don't educate. I was like, you can learn, you can learn just through witnessing. And if you act up, then, you know, we'll kick you out. But other than that, like, um, that that's uh, how I've been operating. And my spirit has been so much stronger and so much better for it. And I ain't going back. So none of y'all commissioned me to write your edu little educational plays. I don't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's where I sort of sit here. So <laughs> on that. You just reminded me, Tara, of a, you know, it's funny because all of these things are experiences we've all had, right? Um, 
and I just was remembering um, the whole, I, uh, back when Chingwe, for those of you who don't know, Chingwe is my child um, who is learning, learning his craft and doing well at it. Um, first audition for a show in Boston, and it was a show about our people. Actually, it was about Long Island in the winter, and they didn't cast Chingwe. Um, and one of the reasons I think um, is that you know I'm looking at I'm looking at us, and um, is that they didn't see him as native. Right, which is the question that I have in an earlier panel um, where they were talking about, um, you know, when you're casting a role and you don't have that identity within your, your immediate purview, how do you go about, you know, you know the, the idea of, oh, there aren't any, or there aren't any here anyway. Um, and um, trying to figure out how to get people to see us in all of our beautifulness. Not a single one of us looks the same, right? And that um, how, and I think this, I'm going to address this to you, Jasmine, first, because I know Western Massachusetts has such an invisibility problem. And, and so I'm badly formulating this question, right? Um, thankfully, I know y'all can follow me. Um, how are you dealing with that as a nitmuck performer, actress, playwright in your own land? Ooh, okay, so... <laughs> Thank you um, for that question, Um So that is a very near and dear um, subject to my heart. Um, I have dealt with being told that I am not a native person since I was a child. Um, I remember being in school, um, in kindergarten, in fact, um, I think like, I was home from like a social and I was really excited and we were talking and it was like around this time we were talking about things and you know five-year-old Jasmine is even more bubbly than 28-year-old Jasmine and just is like I'm native and I start chatting about things and the kids look at me and they go no you're not savages don't exist and I'm like whoa 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 <laughs> I had no idea how to respond to that as a kid. And then fast forward to being in college. And um, I went to a college in New York, a conservatory. And they were going around uh, asking us what our ethnicities were for parts that we could play. Look, it was AMDA. Um, <laughs> and so they, they say, um, they get to me and they say, what are you? And I say, I'm native. And some girl behind me goes, yeah, you and every other white chick. And I snapped on her. Um, and that has just been a continuous occurrence throughout my life. And um, back then, you know, I, uh, when I was at AMDA, I had short red hair because I had a phase where I wanted red hair. And um, so it did not help my case. But now I've got very, 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 very long um, brown hair. And um, so that gives me a little bit more uh, visibility, which is fun. I'm growing it because I'm seeing how long it'll get. And um, also for um, in honor of my ancestors. And I... Um, so it's amazing. It's amazing how much um, you can just be told, oh no, you don't exist. Wherever you are, you don't exist. Um, I went and I fought um, against the Turner's Falls mascot and 
a, a whole article came out against me saying like this non-native person fought against the mascots and um, used a picture of me as Princess Anna because I'm a cosplayer. And um, it's people will see whatever they want to see and whatever serves their purpose. But if you look like Pocahontas, then, well, that person is native, you know? If you look like the people in the Westerns who um, aren't usually native, um, they will see you as more native than if you just walk in um, with short red hair, you know, um, looking more like a white person. And I think that's an interesting thing. Um, and that's a roundabout way to get to uh, your question, which is um, out here, there is visibility because, um, and there's not visibility. There's visibility for me because people know who I am um, in a way, like my name gets passed around. And I feel like that's a very common thing where like people are like, oh, we know a native, this one. <laughs> bring her in and um then you you do things um and um then there's also in terms of theater um nothing there's there's no roles um really ever uh for native people um i'm i'm super excited to see that um more and more roles are getting written um but if you want to be cast in something you have to audition for um uh, white parts and that's how it is out out this way um, one of the tragedies of uh, not living in the city is not having as much access to um, the native theater community I don't know if I answered that question all the way but it's all around it no, I, I, I appreciate the answer, Tapatni. Um, Vani, I'm going to ask you also to talk on this because I, I see you in Shakespeare mostly, and I know that's not all that you've done. Um, and, um, and I know that you've also done a fair amount of work with the theater companies that you're in to get them to see you uh, um, in your fullness. Yes, um, Mrs. Siobhan. Um, yeah, the majority of my training was, um, you know, definitely rooted in Shakespeare, in, in European writers, basically, and, um, and educators. You know, um, when I came, when I stepped into um, you know, being a, a theater person, being a, just wanting to tell stories, wanting to be involved in theater and sought training, um, you know, development of my voice and movement. And, um, you know, there, while there was um, some diversity in term, from a global sense, there was active and just overt erasure of indigenous playwrights and um, and stories um, of this land that we were on. You know, I think and, and I think that all of that, I think my education was really intentional um, and that, you know, I learned about, you know, uh, a certain set of playwrights and um, sort of was was exposed to the quote unquote origins of storytelling being being Greek and um, you know how we do theater right now being being of um, coming from you know these these so-called originators and so going through these these training programs relationships are built and and um, you know, I did a I did a lot of work here in the city with with various companies, um, 
and also worked with a lot of black drama um but you know have done several seasons with commonwealth shakespeare company having been at you know the art at the same time steve mailer was who's the founder and have this relationship friendship um and moving into i would say my my career sort of moved into more um connecting with language being able to have access to language and um studying language in 2005 and at that time that connection um just sort of opened up a lot within me um became a part of the um teaching team that founded uh, makaya sakwiku here in mashpee it's a language and cultural immersion school for children um here on our our reservation and we have been able to um you know build something that we hope will um, continue language and carry language forward and of course when teaching with with young children it's it's lights camera action so a lot of my theater background has been put into use and so they they kind of mirror each other a lot stepping um back onto stage in the last couple of years, um, everything is informed by that, right? So I think it's important to recognize that when we might see an actor of color in these, these plays or, you know, um, in, in these stories written by white writers, they're understanding that there is work being done to bring their whole selves to the work right that there that there is um this uh, openness within that happens when when coming to different stories different playwrights um and for me in the last couple of years it has been this unapologetic presence <laughs> you know if, if you're going to hire me you're going to hear my perspective it's not anything that's going to be um marginalized in any way um the the quality it's not just what gets produced it's the process as well um what the process is not only for myself as a woman of color in the space but particularly for the younger bipoc um, actors or designers or producers who are involved um and that we are not here to be in service to shakespeare shakespeare is here in service to us right it is not that we um drop and and shed and remove who we are and as actors in order to do these roles we bring who we are and 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 then some in order to fulfill this voice and to carry this forward um in this in the past just real quick in the past um production that i was in much ado about nothing um one of the the lead characters claudio um young um puerto rican actor um in a in a particular moment it was clear that a language other than english really was being called forward and so me being the language keeper that i am i'm like why are we sticking with english he doesn't have to say these words the playwright is dead. We can do what we we can do what we want, right? And so, you know, the the actor chose. It was you know a moment of of grief. If we know the play, it's this moment of of grief that's not really real, but but it's real for this this character. And they and they you know went went forward and spoke um, spoke their language, spoke Spanish in that moment, and it was one that you know. Um, that lifted the experience of it, not just for the average onlooker, but for other Spanish speakers, other Puerto Rican young people and 
um, and audience members really lean forward and we're like, oh my God, you know, we're hearing something else in an atmosphere where English, right? And the, and the, and the patriarchy is like really up here, right? And so the patriarchy like doesn't, you know, we don't have to bow down to that. You know, we've got, we've got a beautiful woman at the helm. <laughs> we, have a, we have, you know, if we're going to do all of this hiring, we have to bring all aspects of that, of that individual into the room, right? And so that was just, you know, one example of being a voice in this space, not just in the rehearsal hall, but in, in um, you know, in the office space, you know, behind the scenes. Um, and, and just saying, if you're going to do DEI, if you're going to be doing a bar work, this is what it means in practice. When you hire us, you cannot silence us. You cannot just expect us to fit in some little hole. I've, I can fit in that hole. I've got papers on my wall that say that I can. However, I choose not to. I'm going to bring my whole self to the work and, and these environments should be prepared for that. Stop with me. I'm just, I've, I've got my, um, it's time to go to Q&A message. Um, but I just want to know, I just realized something. When I, all three of you have dealt with Shakespeare and how, and, and bringing your full self into Shakespeare and changing it right? Making changes so that it's a better reflection, I think, uh, of what it was originally intended to be, which is part for humanity of that time and bringing it further into our time and our experiences. Um, and so I do want to open up to questions. Um, I will also say for the folks in the room, we could talk about this all day long and probably have talked about it all day long. Um, and so um, I, I'm open, I'm looking for questions in the chat if you want to raise your voice, um, that's also appreciated. Um, I encourage you to get to know the work of all three of these amazing people. Um, they are uh, They are what's making this work, this storytelling work um, more valuable and more valued and um, and more real for, for everybody. So I'm going to open it up to questions um, and hope that there's some in the in the chat because we will keep talking otherwise. You know if nobody else will I will run my mouth and have questions. So go ahead, go ahead, Leilani. <laughs> well, just I'm I'm just letting folks know pop, pop it in the chat or raise your hands because otherwise I am happy to go forward. And want to name I had the chance to see the production uh, that Vani was referencing, and I had the privilege of getting to see that with a collection of my former students, all of whom were BIPOC, uh, and several of whom were uh, Afro Hispanic and spoke Spanish and. I'm not turning my camera on because for the third time today I'm crying, and that's what I have to to say about that. That wasn't a question. I uh, that that was my comment. It was it was. Uh, I've been involved with that company as well several times in several capacities over the years, uh, and I've been in the audience many times. And that moment was the correct call. And so thanking you as an elder on your own land for the work that you did in upholding all of our fullness and all of our humanity for um, my students. In a moment that I, I didn't speak, I don't speak Spanish. That is not my language, that is not my heritage, that is not my moment. Uh, and it is a moment that I have deep gratitude for getting to have experienced. <clears throat> Eric in the uh, chat from Sandglass has uh, asked about working at a community level, if any of you would like to share. And this is Siobhan. I just wanted to say a top of touch for that. Um, and, and also just wanted to add, um, and then, and then I'll certainly go on to Eric's question, um, that the preparation for that moment, this moment of uh, another, a language other than English, 
um, in a Shakespeare play, right? Um, in the middle of Boston on land that, um, you know, systemically held, you know, where the Indian Act was upheld, where, where two or more Wampanoag people um, found walking were considered, you know, a mob, and where speaking Wampanoag was, was um, illegal, where there were public hangings and, and um, all sorts of violence perpetuated on, on black and brown bodies. This individual actor um, went through the process to build this moment. So in the previews, when we did this moment, there were there was um, you know speaking in in Spanish and it was um, because people were laughing actually and and it was noted that there needed to be a bill they needed to establish the Spanish and for some reason that like just brought I had a visceral reaction to that because this young brown man's presence on stage for a Boston, majority Boston audience did not invite the possibility for another language, for a language other than English. And so that's the level of colonization when we come into these spaces that, that, we, are, that we are dealing with, that we are breaking down, that we are dismantling. You know, that is the level of, of um, expectation on our bodies and our voices to to move in a certain way. Um, just moving over to this question um, about working at the community level. Um, I think it's integral to any artist's life to work at the community level, um, and that um, if you if one does find themselves, you know, working in theater companies, make sure that they're doing it too. Um, I'll speak also on that. Um, this is Jasmine speaking. Uh, as a and thank you, Vani. Um, on on a working on a community level, I think um, something that I've really enjoyed seeing, that I've really enjoyed being a part of as well, um, with native productions, we've been seeing a lot more of um, accessible tickets. Um, for our, our people, for our elders, um, accessibility in, in multiple different ways uh, that isn't just like traditional um, theater, like you've got to pay for it or you get your comps and that's it. It's like, nope, let's be patient. Let's get these people into this, the places. Let's sit, um, let's make sure that there's room for um, our elders. Let's make sure that there's room for children. Let's make sure that there's um, this space. Uh, because these are native spaces, and that's what you get <laughs> if you're if you're doing a native play, right? Um, and I've I've really appreciated that and enjoyed that, and um, I, I think it's just a lovely thing. Tara, I'm going to ask you to also follow up on that question, and also noting that there are about two minutes left that I get to hold y'all. So. Um, Go for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, agree wholeheartedly. Um, how so? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I know a single artist who did not get their start, did not have some connection in community theater. Um, I don't think I can name one. I mean, that's certainly also my experience too. Um, yeah, but I mean, it was also like tying it into like the like the where are they question, so to say, um, is, you know, right now Quantum, again, that's the play everybody likes. But anyway, but uh, Quantum is currently running at a community theater in Sacramento right now. Um, it's a like it's a full production. It's the it's a workshop production because they were like, we don't want to do the world premiere because we're just community community theater. And I was like, I mean, you can, I don't care. Anyway, um, but yes, that was really lovely on their end. But, you know, I think about how, um, what's so lovely about community theater is that everybody's there because they want to be, you know, um, versus folks aren't there because that's how they get their health insurance, you know, or like, 
you know, they, they're like, I need to support my family. So I'm going to work at this very oppressive <laughs> PWI, Lord Theater, so to say. Um, and my experience with, um, with them, it's matriarchy theaters, their very first production. I'm very proud. Um, so if you're in the area, go, go see it. But anyway, um, they really beat the pavement to find two native people for those roles. Like they did so much community outreach, out, outreach work um, than most professional theaters have ever done for any of my plays, uh, whether I've written them or directed them. It's always like fallen onto me as an individual. And, you know, and that's just something that um, I just find to be so interesting. It's the theater with the least amount of resources, with the least amount of, you know, clout, especially because they're a brand new theater company doing all of this work um, to actually operate within community, which is a word a lot of people in the theater like to throw around, but don't actually know what that means um, or don't actually use it in practice. You know, I have, I have big thoughts about that. But um, yeah, and I think that's just like that spirit of what it actually means to be in relationship to one another, which I think is really clear in the community theater level. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, we all have our stories, not everywhere. But anyway, but so to say is so clear, um, just at the heart of it is one that I wish uh, was more present um, through all the different levels and, and areas of the theater. Um, and then, yeah, and then I guess like finally too, if you like wondering where the natives are at, I mean, what a wonderful time to shout out like Terrace Parento, uh, like who has a whole ass casting agency just for natives. Uh, you want to follow me on Twitter. My pin tweet has a spreadsheet of natives in it in all kinds of disciplines. Also, you know, y'all put, put your names on if you want to. Anyway, um, is that there are so many resources run by natives, led by natives, met throughout community of uh, folks all over the place. Um, and then again, also then, also then tie all the pieces together. You know, natives look many different ways. I can guarantee you. Um, it's on my Twitter at Tara Tomahawk, pin tweet. Anyway, you can access it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, is you know, natives look all sorts of different ways. Natives are everywhere, you know, they didn't get us all, uh, they did not. Um, and also to, you know, uh the natives who, you know, do look like those stereotypes, because you know, that's where I sort of fall. Um, a lot of people are like, no, you're not native, you're Latina. And I was like, no. It's very weird. But anyway, so to say um, is, is that literally we are everywhere. We look all different ways, all of the shades. Um, you can imagine it's just a matter of like, are you doing the work to actually be in community with people? Because like, let me tell you, the natives, we love Facebook. Go check out the Facebook events. You'll see. <laughs> There's so many things. Um, yeah, I ain't never gone nowhere in this country. And I've gone a lot to places uh, where I did not find native people um, in the area um, that it's at. So like, y'all, you can do it. Just do some work. It ain't that hard. It really is not. Ah, oh, top with me, my friends. I am so grateful to have you in this space. And um, I just appreciate the effort and the thoughts. And um, and yeah, we will be continue this conversation for a long time. We've all had them together in, in different spaces, different places. Um, but yeah, thank you for all of that. Um, Leilani. Hi, all. Leilani speaking. Again, uh, I have white skin, red lips, red glasses, brown hair, and dark, shiny nails at all times. Uh, uh, once again, I am closing out this panel with many, many, many thanks to Bonnie, Kita, Tar Tara, and Jasmine for sharing with us and naming one of the things that I personally am most grateful for in the space is the sharing of your languages. Uh, we've talked a lot over the course of this particular convening, the word community and the word communities has come up a lot. So naming um, part of the way we build that is with the words we speak and the words that we hear and the effort we put into those things. So thank you for your presence. Thank you for your contributions in all ways. For folks who will be joining us for the next session, we are cutting it close. So it's in about 10 minutes. 
refresh yourselves. I am putting it into the chat now. It is a performance and Q&A with our friends at Theater Kapow, some of whom have joined us for the entire day. Again, you can log in here. The same reminder that has followed all of our panels and performances, please use the Whova app and website to your advantage. You can find information on our panelists and performers, links to their website, social media, images, whatever they have felt comfortable sharing in that space. Um, if you have any questions about any of the links I dropped in the chat over the course of conversation, you can reach me at the same email address I have shared. I am happy to provide those resources so that you can co connect with our panelists. With many thanks and much love, and I hope we will see you all for our next piece. And hopefully we're going to get through with like maybe only one of us crying <laughs> for the rest of the day. If we can do that, it would be an NPT victory. Thank you all. Thank you. Mahalo. Much love.